Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion of Chebyshev polynomials. Chebyshev polynomials are constructed by considering Euler's formula And so the idea is that we know that e to the i n theta is going to be a cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta on one hand by Euler's formula. But I can also write this as e to the i theta to the power n. This is e to the i theta to the power n, which is cosine of theta plus i sine of theta to the power of n. And now we can use the binomial theorem on this, right? The binomial theorem says this is the sum. K goes from 0 to n of n choose k. And then we're going to have these terms over here. We'll have cosine, cosine plus 2 n minus k of x of theta. And then we're going to have sine to the k, i to the power k, and then sine to the power k of theta like that from Euler's formula, right? Now, of course, so I would only like the, the terms that do not have an i are the cosine of n theta terms, right? So the cosine of n theta, cosine of n theta, are the terms without i's, right? Okay, so terms that i's occur when k is even, right? So when k is even, we get this. In other words, that's equivalent to saying that k needs to be even in the binomial expansion. So that says that k is even in the binomial expansion. Okay. And so let's write out the first couple terms. In other words, what does that tell us? It tells us that the cosine of n theta, well, when k is equal to zero, we don't get any sine terms over there. We're just going to get a, uh, when k is equal to zero, we just have n choose, uh, n choose zero, which is equal to one, right? And then it will give us a cosine to the power of n of theta. Then when k is equal to 2, we're going to have minus n choose 2 because we have i squared, cosine to the n minus 2 of theta, and then sine squared of theta. And then the next one will be a 4, right? So we'll have plus n over 4, and then cosine to the n minus 4 of theta, sine to the 4th of theta, sine to the 4th of theta, all the way down to the very, very, depending on the parity, right? So it goes plus, minus, plus, minus, all the way down like that, right? Now, each of these terms will have an even power of sine, right? And so since we know that sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of theta, I know that every one of these terms over here can be written as if this is a polynomial in powers of cosine, right? So in other words, therefore, there exists a polynomial. Hence, there is a polynomial. of degree n such that, and let's call that polynomial degree n, classically we call that tn, tn, such that tn of cosine of theta is equal to this cosine of n theta, right? Cosine of n theta, like that. And this relationship over here defines the polynomial, the Chebyshev polynomial, right? So these tn are Chebyshev polynomials. So let's do a few simple examples first, right? So what would be the first example of this? So the first example, Example, cosine of theta is equal to just cosine of theta when n is equal to 1, right? And so that says that t1 of x is equal to x, okay? If I look at cosine of 2 theta, well, I know cosine of 2 theta by the double angle formula is just going to be what? It's just going to be 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1. So that says that t2 of x is equal to 2x squared minus 1. Good, because it's a polynomial of in cosine. Let's do one more sort of non-trivial one. Cosine of 3 theta is going to be what? Well, it's going to be cosine of, let's do a 2 theta plus theta. And so by angle addition, this is the cosine of 2 theta cosine of theta, right? And then minus the sine of 2 theta, the sine of theta. Now you might say, well, where are, the, where are the cosines in here, right? Well, cosine of 2 theta is really what? Is really 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1 times cosine of theta. That's great. Now, those are all powers of cosine now. And then minus 2 sine theta 
cosine theta, I use double angle on this over here now, right? Then times sine of theta. And now I have a sine squared of theta, right? So this is going to be two cosine squared theta minus cosine theta, and then minus two, one minus cosine squared theta times cosine theta, right? And that works out great. And now let's count the, th the theta cubed. That's going to be a th cosine cubed of theta, right? So that's a three. So how many theta cubes do I have? I have four cosine cubed of theta. And then what are the other terms over here? Then I'm going to have a minus cosine and a minus two cosine. So that's a minus three cosine theta which tells me over here, after a little bit of work, that my T3 of x is 4x cubed minus 3x. That's my third Chebyshev polynomial. So you might say, well, I don't want to have to do trig identities all the time to figure this out. And so let's use one trig identity generator recursion formula, right? So what's our Chebyshev recursion? And so here's the idea. So let's recall that the cosine of alpha plus the cosine of beta is equal to a two cosine of alpha plus beta over two cosine of alpha minus beta over two, alpha minus beta over two, right? So in particular, what that allows me to do is that allows me to specify that the cosine of n plus one theta and then plus the cosine of n minus one theta is gonna be equal to what? Is gonna be equal to two times if I add these together, what will I have? If I add these together, I'm going to have a 2n over 2, so that's going to be a cosine of n theta, cosine of n theta. And then um, if I subtract these things, I'm going to have a 1 minus 1 over just a cosine of theta. Beautiful. Okay. So now what does this relationship over here tell me? This relationship over here gives me information about, about the jumping shift polynomials, because if the cosine of theta is equal to x over here, then what can we say? This tells me that tn that tn plus 1 of x is equal to 2x, because 2 cosine gives me an x, and then cosine of n plus 1 is going to be um, with x equals cosine theta, of course, right? So with x equals cosine theta. And then tn of x, and then minus tn minus 1 of x. So that's a recursion relationship. So this is our Chebyshev recursion. It's our Chebyshev Is this over here? Beautiful. And we also get one sort of other thing. I've, of course, all I've done over here is I've just looked at this trigonometric identity. I've replaced x with cosine. I've replaced, uh, I've replaced x with cosine theta, and I get this relationship over here for free. Great. Now, this gives us one sort of final way of, of relating um, these things to polynomials. As a consequence of this, we know that tn of x, just as a consequence of the definition, I know that tn of x is going to be what? That's going to be if theta is equal to, if x is the cosine of theta, then theta is the inverse cosine of x. So this says that tn of x is the cosine of n cosine inverse of x. Okay, so that's a, that's, a, that's a trigonometric representation of the inverse trig functions, but oftentimes to generate our Chebyshev polynomials, we're going to use this recursion relationship. So in further videos, we're going to study these Chebyshev polynomials, understand their roots, understand their max and mins, and understand how they can be used to approximate continuous functions on a compact set. Thank you very much.